Hey, I'm Mark, and today's project, we're building a bench. This is uh, my wife, Kelly. This is her debut on YouTube with me. We're going to be doing a whole new segment with her designing stuff. She's a gifted uh, interior decorator, landscaper, and a half a dozen other things. Um, she uh, saw this bench. Okay, where were we at when you saw this? We were in a little shop that was extremely expensive, and I saw something similar to this, and Mark decided to give me a gift, and he built um, this bench for me, and I will pick a fabric and upholster it at some point. Now, the first thing I want to do is bend my, make my two circles so I can kind of build my frame to match the circles. And this is an old flat bar roller I made probably 20 years ago out of uh, out of uh, a trash compactor. Well, you can see how good of a job that little roller does. It's not even welded yet, and it's a perfect circle. We get these tacked up, and we'll start on the frame. I'm cutting it with a uh, steel cutting Linux blade. And you can see it makes a nice cut. Well, that was fast. I got all my pieces cut. This is going to be the bottom for the feet. Next, let's get the uh, sides tacked up. Well, I got one end clamped to the table. My table is perfectly flat and square, so it makes uh, welding fabrication easy for me. Well, let's get it tacked up. That's what I'm looking for. Get the other side made up and we'll get the rest back together. To help hold me uh, the parts together, I'm using magnets, right angle magnets, and a clamp. Holds everything flush and true. We'll get this side tacked up and then the next. Well, for the feet, I've just welded in a nut. And you can just turn and adjust the height. Well, that's it all tacked together. It's uh, amazing. My wife always says uh, how crazy it is. You know, an hour and a half ago, that was just a piece of two pieces of stick tubing, and now it's a bench. Well, I got to get it welded up and figure out what color she wants it. Well, we got it all welded up. Uh, I used a 332nd 6011 rod, 60 amps, and I did downhill welding, vertical downhill. It's a little easier, uh, especially for your beginners, a little easier to weld. It's more thin stuff. <clears throat> and as long as it's not structural, this is just furniture, it's fine. To clean it up, I'm going to be using a sanding disc. Uh, you don't want to use a grinding rock because you'll just gouge into it when you're building furniture. So this will slowly remove it. It's a 120 grit sandpaper. Made to polish it up, make it look real nice. Well, now that I've got it, everything hit with the sander as best I can, I'm going to take a needle gun, and it will clean up all those little nooks and crannies that you just can't get to with the grinders, and sanders. Well, I got it all cleaned up, and I've drilled holes in it uh, to hold down the plywood. And next, we get the plywood cut and then painted and upholstered. All right, I got the plywood cut. I went ahead and took the router and did a quarter-inch bead all around it. Uh, I'm going to paint it the base coat with a chalk paint uh, it's a graphite gray one step Amy Howard and I'm just going to give it one coat I'm not worried about perfection uh, my wife is going to highlight it after this dries she's going to dab it swipe it and do something special I'm applying a faux finish um, 
on this and I'm not a professional and I decided that I liked the look that I did with a paper towel better than I did those fancy brushes that people buy on this item anyway and I am applying the Ann Howard paint some people like the Sloan paint um, this is just convenient for us to get because it's down the street at a little hardware store that's near our house and it's just more convenient to go pick this up and it works just as good as the other and I am uh, there's a dark finish on it I'm applying a lighter finish at this point and letting the dark kind of bleed through to give it that kind of aged look but I don't want it to look too distressed as much as I do elegant I'll be putting this in my bedroom and I want it to come off elegant, not feel distressed. is the finished product. We just got through upholstering it. It turned out exactly like I was expecting and it saved us about $600 plus dollars from the one that we had originally seen at the store. Um, now I'm going to talk about a, the fabric a little bit. I'm redoing this room and I'm going with the Belgian linen on my comforter area because it is very comfortable looking yet elegant. And when I initially bought this fabric I fell in love with the white side and then when I got it here, I fell back in love with this one more. So I saved this excess piece and hopefully we can make some pillows or something out of this fabric because it cost a good amount of money. And this room um, has been the same for 20 years. We are now redoing it um, to update it a little bit. Mark just painted it white. Um, we will at some point be putting a rug here. I don't think we'll be weaving that because we're not that good. But we will be mounting the TV next, and we will do a video on that, and then accessorizing the room, and maybe some faux painting ideas. I'm thinking about painting this bed, and I will show you how to get the look for a cheaper price. Um, this is Kelly. I'm glad to finally meet all of you. Uh, thank you so much for watching.